What a mixed bag for week number seven. This is the week seven fantasy football reaction show where we're going to go through all the good and the bad, the studs and the duds for week number seven. And, and I warn you, this is going to be a roller coaster ride of a show tonight because we had some good, we had some bad. There's no way to spin this. There were awful, awful situations that unfolded. Bijan Robinson being ill, sick. No word on this at all from Arthur Smith or this Falcons team. Nothing. We knew nothing about Bijan being under the weather. Doesn't even score a fantasy football point for you. One rush for three yards. Didn't even get his .5 uh, yard. Um, actually, did, he did get the. He did one rush. I think it was over one yard for, for the for the freebie on Underdog Fantasy. It was a crazy day. We had Mahomes back. Mahomes is back. Our top buy low of the week. Yeah, Eckler was too, and Eckler didn't deliver, but we're going to talk about why you should still double down on buying Eckler heading into week number eight. And sometimes when a player doesn't bounce back, it's a good thing. you got another week to buy him. But Kelsey's back. Mahomes is back. Jameer Gibbs went off. Walker still did his thing, even though he didn't score. A whole lot of bad, a whole lot of good. The Fantasy Football Show Week 7 Reaction Show begins right now. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. From the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. What a mixed bag of a day here in week number seven. I mean, it was it was unbelievably uh, horrible. Um, God, I, I you know there there were so many good moments, but it was hard to relish and enjoy them when you had so many things going bad. JSN popped off, Pacheco still scoring and doing well. Gibbs being Jameer Gibbs, the Gibbs we want him to be. He was that guy today. But what happens when Monty comes back? The game script was awful for the Detroit Lions. And we didn't think Gibbs was going to get any work at all. And then he started ripping them off. Some of it was in garbage time, right? But it doesn't matter. He scored points or points. Fantasy football points are fantasy football points. Let's start off with the good before we dig into the bad. Let's start off with Patty Mahomes coming in. Our buy low of the week. Literally the buy low of the season because he's been struggling every single week to be to at least meet expectations. So every week has been a go get Mahomes, go get a go get Mahomes, go get Mahomes, go get Mahomes, go get Mahomes. He's gonna bounce back. He's gonna be magnificent. And and you couldn't steal him away, but he was certainly undervalued. And right now, 424, four touchdowns, one interception. This guy was an absolute gem. In week number seven, to the moon goes Patrick Mahomes. Do it live. To the moon. Patty Mahomes, you monster, you uh, win single-handedly winning games in week number seven. Travis Kelsey, the Kelsey approach at number five overall. The best, one of the best draft uh, uh, strategies walking into 2023 fantasy football for us. Let's let's be let's be fair and honest though. So was Bijan. Bijan in round one was also one of the best draft strategies for me walking into 2023 fantasy football week number one. But so was this one. Mixed bag. Travis Kelsey is back. 12 of 13, 179, and a touch. One of the best draft strategies. He got injured. People were worried about him. Now he's back, baby. Back to the to the moon. Moon goes Travis Kelsey. Jameer, like literally, you own Kelsey and Mahomes. You are sitting so pretty right now. Your team is looking phenomenal. And, and you can even be weak at other positions. It almost doesn't matter. And there was somebody that had that duo last night that was like, what do I do? Do I divide and conquer? You don't need to really divide and conquer with the, the duo playing this good. You could figure it out. Like anybody has these two, stand down on any, any sort of, okay, I don't feel like my team's strong enough everywhere else. Just wait, wait it out, wait it out, wait A-chan out. Go buy A-chan injured. Go buy Monty injured. Fill your team with players that are that are by lows right now and surround them by Mahomes and Kelsey. And you're going to where? Where are you going? To the moon. To the moon. To the moon. Uh, Jameer Gibbs went to the moon. Do 
went it live. To the moon. Jameer Gibbs was fire. And, and he only ran the ball 11 times. This was Devon Achan production. This is what Devon Achan has been surviving on. 11, 12 carries. Uh, pulling in 5, 6, 7 receptions. He pulled in 9 for 58 yards in this game. But Devon Achan and Jameer Gibbs are cut from the same cloth. And we have to understand that these two guys, given at least 10, 12, 13, 14 carries, sometimes we want 18, sometimes we'll get 12, and four, five, six, seven receptions, 100 total yards, touchdown, explosive run. They just need opportunities. One out of every 15 opportunities will be a house, a house call for a touchdown. A house call for a touchdown. One out of every 15, 18 opportunities... A house call for a touchdown. It, did anybody notice the, the, the similarity between Jameer Gibbs' walk-in touchdown where nobody could even get to him and the similar touchdown on the other end of the field uh, uh, several weeks back where A-Chan just jogged into the end zone. Literally, A-Chan jogged into the end zone. Untouched. Nobody could even swarm him. Everybody had the angle on A-Chan. Four or five guys had the angle on A-Chan. They couldn't even get near him, and he jogged in. He jogged in faster than any of those guys could sprint to him. He jogged into the end zone. A-Chan said, here's the, here's the football. Boom, touchdown. I'm going to, where's my football when I need it? A-Chan literally, here's A-Chan. Here's A-Chan. Yeah. There's the football. There's the football referee. No one's even near him. No one comes near him. Did anybody notice the similarity between Jameer Gibbs' little jogging touchdown? Nobody could touch him. He was jogging. And A-Chan, they're cut from the same cloth. All we need is this guy to get the volume. That's all we need. Um, you're waking up my dogs and, and pissing off my landlord. <laughs> Jameer Gibbs, I'm going to break this. I got a mallet fund. Somebody gave me... A super chat that they earmarked in the super chat for a new gavel. Because I'm going to break this thing once in a while. I'm going to break it. Kincaid finally showed up, Hector. You are correct. Kincaid finally did Kincaid things. We don't know if this is going to translate. And and where is this Where is this stat line? I think it's right here. Kincaid. Kincaid dropped 75 yards on eight, uh, catching all eight of his targets. And we don't know if this will translate into next week. But good God, it was so nice to see Kincaid show up. Hector, appreciate you dropping that little reminder. Jameer Gibbs, 11 totes, 68 yards, uh, 9 receptions, 58 yards, and of course the touchdown, which I don't see on the stat line. Uh, put some respect on Jameer Gibbs' names when you're, when you're talking like that. Uh, this guy right here, Mike Evans, had a day. 6 of 8, 82 yards and a touchdown. Welcome back, Mike Evans, to the moon. To the moon. Um, fantastic wide receiver, too, right now. You could argue wide receiver one for sure. You're like He's got that potential. Uh, Diggs was was pretty good, 58 yards and a touchdown. Um, just didn't have a lot of accurate th balls thrown his way or a lot of open, I would say, uh, catches to, to, to reel in. 6 of 12. He, he only pulled in half of his targets. Uh, Barkley had a, a pretty decent afternoon, although I'm selling high on Barkley off this game because Barkley got injured again in this game. He got injured again, and it's it, it looked like he was going to be done for the year. He ran to the sideline, he, he, or first of all, he went to the sideline on a on a nice little run and got tackled. It looked like he broke his arm or something, and they put a they put a wrap on it. They sent him back out onto the field, and he ended up playing really well. But the guy can't stay healthy. He's going to be one of the most exciting players. I hope to God he does stay healthy, though. Me telling you to sell him high, I'm not rooting for injury. I don't want to come in here some live stream and go, told you so. I want him to be healthy. Why? Number one, I don't want any anybody hurt. I'm not rooting for someone to get hurt. What kind of person would want that? Second of all, he's going to be one of the most exciting players to talk about in a selfish way. One of the most exciting players to talk about in the offseason. We'll be talking about him January 1, February 1. March 1, over and over and over, because this guy is going to be the hottest free agent player. Where is he going to go? Is he going to stay in, in New York? Will he will he head elsewhere? We'll see. He says he wants to be a New York Giant for life, but I don't know if I buy that. So Barkley had a day. He, had he ran the ball 21 times for 77 yards, also pulled in three receptions for 41 and a touchdown. The touchdown was a nice little 
uh, uh, scamper by him. Uh, Jerome Ford, this one's a mix of good and bad because if you started him, you got 11 carries, 74 yards, two touchdowns. Way to go. To the moon start. To the you moon. know who you are that started him. Problem is high ankle sprain is what he looks like he suffered. We'll find out that enter enter in enter in this man right here, Kareem Hunt, who now is going to probably take over for him if, if it is a high ankle sprain. Doesn't look quite the same, but he's still getting volume, and, and he's in an, an offense that has a great defense that's going to allow this thing to kind of give and take, reciprocation. Defense sets up the run. The run sets, 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 up, uh, sets up the defense. Kareem Hunt ran the ball 10 times for 31 yards, three yards of carry, but got himself two touchdowns because the Browns field position, and that's probably going to continue. So if you have Kareem Hunt, nice work. If you had Ford, nice work until he got hurt. You really had something, and it sucks to know that he's not going to literally come out and continue to play well. He's a nice little surprise. He runs so hard. And, and and Tyson goes out there and looks better than Fields did in terms of like accuracy for the most part. I mean, Fields had two really good games. Let's not discredit what Fields did in week four and five, correct? Week four and five. He's fantastic. I don't think uh, Abadjan's taking his job. Um, but, but 162, a touchdown, 30 to 12 win. Unbelievable win, to be honest, over the Raiders. Raiders aren't a, a walk in the park. They're also going to not be a playoff team. But they're not a walk in the park defensively. And so this was a nice little outing for for this quarterback, this 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 young, um, maybe uh, uh, you could say this is a drama-injected uh, situation now. And maybe they make Fields take his time coming back. We had two reports. One report a little over 24 hours ago suggesting that Fields would miss two to three games. Two to three more weeks. Then a report came out of like less than 15 hours ago after that said he's going to try and come back for week eight. So mixed bag reports on whether this guy's going to return or not, Justin Fields. But I have a feeling they won't rush him back. That's the way this goes. Horrible news here. Christian Watson. Not only did Jordan Love look like crap almost the entire game he scored he does what he does fantasy wise he kind of comes back gets relevant again did nothing the entire first half practically and then comes in scores two touchdowns one was a tip ball but nonetheless scored two touchdowns kind of had himself a little day going two touchdowns near near 200 yards passing and this man right here didn't do much all game re-injured end of the game near the end of the game walked off the field or, or limped off the field, laid down, and then looked like he was holding his knee or his hammy again. Hard to know, but he laid down, put his hands on his head in frustration. The trainers surrounded him, and he just hobbled off. So my guess is, and I don't know for certain, it could be one of those weird things where you think somebody's out, like Saquon. We thought Saquon was done for the year today. And then Christian Watson, you know, it, it, it hobbles off and he's done for multiple games. We don't really know, but but I would say you know Christian Watson. It's just it's just one of those disappointing situations that just keeps on giving disappointment. And I, you know Love at this point is a big uh, vulnerable quarterback play going forward at this point. But you know in Superflex you got to roll with him, and in Superflex he's still sufficient enough with two touchdowns or even if there's an interception even if the yardage is not what you want but the bottom line is in one qb league you might need to start planning accordingly to get another signal caller under center if he is your starter michael pittman two and five two of five uh pulled in two of five targets 83 yards and a touchdown nice little day for michael pittman nice little day for this guy named gardner Minshew, who's an absolute gem. Look at this rock star right here. 15 of 23, 305, two touchdowns, an interception, and uh, uh, part of which fed this man right here. Josh, not Allen. Where's Downs? Where's Josh Downs when you need him? I think he's right here. Here he is. Josh Downs, 506, 125, and a touchdown. What an amazing play for anybody that, that sent that man, that man out onto the field today on your fantasy football roster. Minshew was remarkable, and he'll continue to be a nice flex play. Borderline low, 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 low end QB1 in like injury situations and such. But but certainly an amazing flex play right now. JT coming alive in this one in a tough matchup on top of everything else. 75 yards and a touchdown in this Colts Week 7 loss against the, Bolt, uh, the Cleveland Browns. Adding three receptions for 45 yards. 
we could officially say that we're probably uh, we're scratching the surface of what we could be seeing on a weekly basis. So let's give the man a standing ovation and all the JT owners out there for waiting this out and they're and we're ready to roll. And, and the fact that the fact that Minshew is doing Minshew things right now, very very solid, very very solid for JT uh, moving forward. So get get excited if you got him. Seems like there's good opportunity coming. Mark Andrews. And let's get to this Bijan thing again. We talked about it already. But Bijan ran the ball one time for three yards. And we weren't sure what was going on at first. We, we didn't know. We were, we were scouring Twitter. And then a, a tweet came out that said that Bijan Robinson is dealing with an illness. Not reported to us. Arthur Smith said nothing. The Falcons said nothing. The news reports said nothing. Seems like this was held back in a very, very frustrating fashion. People all over are are up in arms right now. Just so frustrated with the fact that no one knew this guy was dealing with an illness. And they said he just didn't feel good. So Arthur Smith came out and there was a tweet here by Adam Schefter that I can put up on screen here that came through about, I don't know, was this in the, it was like in the first quarter? That this this news hit in the first quarter, may, maybe the maybe the beginning of the second quarter. I forget where it was, but this is from Adam Schefter, and it said Arthur Smith. Uh, interesting. Arthur Smith said via uh, uh, via uh, the broadcast, Bijan Robinson not feeling all that great. Don't expect him to play much, and 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 we didn't know that. Like th that was that was not necessarily in the middle of the game. This was, was decided. This was worded as if this was known. Don't expect him to play much, and no nobody had any insight on this this information. I just want to scream. I just want to. I just want Arthur Smith gone. I want Arthur Smith gone. Who doesn't know how to use his players? Rappaport, interesting. Arthur Smith via the broadcast. Bijan Robinson just not feeling all that great. Don't expect him to play much today. And we we didn't have that information. And it's just like it's not one thing, it's another. We get one open door. It, it, we have a little bit of clarity somewhere. We take two steps forward and then get kicked right in the nuts and drag three steps backwards. And that's how this one felt. And that's why it's hard to even be excited today, even though a lot of other players did phenomenal, like this man, St. Brown, catching 13 of 19 targets for 102. No touchdowns, but good God. St. Brown doing St. Brown things. <sighs> Just such a mixed bag. It's so hard to be amped up when half of these things are amazing, half these things are um, are just oh, unbelievable. Even Smitty comes to work sick. I'm sick right now, actually. I, I don't even. I, I didn't complain. I didn't complain. I got a major sore throat. Um, I'm feeling very under the weather. I didn't mention it. I didn't even mention it off of that news. But because you said that, I'm gonna tell you. I feel sick. I'm down. I'm down right now. But did I show up to work? Yeah, in the morning, in the evening, during a three-hour live stream before this morning show, one hour. That's over four hours in a like a ten hour window with about five six hours of sleep in between i'm here again to wrap up i'll be here to wrap up at the end of the sunday evening show if you're new to my show subscribe to the channel i'm literally going live uh at least three maybe four times tonight on sundays we go live at least two three times every day i'm live monday through friday at 8 p.m eastern i'm also live whenever news breaks here's here's the schedule here's your boy Monday through Friday, live whenever news breaks. These times are fluctuating. Don't I gotta redo this part because it's different on the time. But we're live on Graveyard Crew all the time. What 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 Bijan doesn't play? I, I'm so frustrated. I'm frustrated with Bijan not playing, but I'm also frustrated with Arthur Smith and this Falcons organization. They don't even know how to use Bijan. You're on the you're on the eight yard line. He would literally give I don't know, Bijan one of the four attempts if they were even going for it on fourth down. You hand the ball to Bijan three times in a row, you're going to score a touchdown. It's asinine. And these stupid commentators are like, hey, Bob, look at Cordell Patterson. He looked fantastic on that four and a half yard run. He's so good. They just need to feed him. Yeah, Al, Cordell Patterson, well, he still got it. Yeah, uh, no thought to, hey, let me grab that mic from you, you bunch of a-holes. 
Why in the hell is Bijan Robinson not getting all the carries? He's the best pure running back in the National Football League. And you're not feeding him the football? I don't even understand. It doesn't even compute for me. I get angry every time I think about it. Why would you not give Bijan Robinson the football three straight times anywhere near the 10 yard line? It makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm getting tired of making excuses for Bijan Robinson because I don't know if Arthur Smith is going to come around. And it's frustrating. And we all punted our first round pick as of this moment. I still have faith. I still want to say, <laughs> before anybody comes in here and says, Smitty gave up on Bijan. Smitty gave I didn't give up on Bijan. I'm frustrated. Bijan is walking into week number seven, which is this week right now, if you can count. Number seven, he was core, He was running back number eight overall in fantasy football. That's actually pretty impressive. For a guy that's being held back, he's got handcuffs on with those handcuffs handcuffed to his, his feet like he's in shackles. And he's literally taking little itty bitty steps toward the end zone and is still number eight overall in fantasy football running back scoring walking into week number seven. Number eight. Number eight. He's getting no usage. He's getting dog water usage. He's not even getting used. He's dropping nothing burgers. And walking into week number seven, he's fantasy football running back eight. That would take one or two explosion games to get back into the top five. One or two explosion games to get back into the top five fantasy football running backs. Maybe two or three explosion games in a row to be running back two overall. At, on the entire season, not just lately, not just extrapolated data. He literally could go out there and have two, maybe two, two touchdown games. One, maybe one touchdown game, but 200 total yards. Maybe, maybe 20 receptions total in those three games span, that three game span. And literally be running back two or running back three. Literally just takes two or three games. I'm not giving up on him, but damn, I don't know. When someone says Smitty, is he bouncing back? I do. I really don't know. I really don't know. I wish I could tell you. Just it'll be okay. Let me let me give you a hug. It'll be okay, Johnny boy. I don't know, Johnny. I have no clue. We could have punted our first round pick. I hope we didn't. He's number eight walking into tonight. Now he probably drops to running back 12, 13, 14. Who the hell knows? But he was number eight. I know there's hope. I know there's hope. I'm just completely... Upset. <sighs> Deonta Foreman. This is another one that pisses me the hell off. Roshan Johnson. I know he got hit in the head. I know he's, it's not really his fault. I understand that. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm not trying to be insensitive here. Okay. He got hit. He got pitter patter on the head. I understand. And, and I hope he's better. This is not any sort of negative thing toward injury. I, people get so upset over this. But good God, man. Your opportunity is right in front of you. Khalil Herbert, high ankle sprain, goes on IR, misses four games. And yeah, you got hit in the head. But you're missing two of the games so far that are literally at your doorstep, at your feet. Here, here's four games, rookie. Go start four games while Khalil Herbert's out. And what does Roshan do? Doesn't get cleared two weeks in a row. I don't, I'm not saying you can, you can help this. But good God, I'm frustrated about it. What does Deonta Foreman go out and do? A running back that, yeah, I mean, look, he looks good. He's not a bad running back at all. But if Roshan Johnson were just on the freaking field, he would have had a two or three touchdown game, and he would have been going to the freaking moon. The and moon. now we've got Roshan Johnson sharding the bed. Just like a lot of other players, the luck on, on Roshan right now, the luck on Jameer Gibbs lately, the luck on Bijan, the luck on all three of these running backs, Roshan, Bijan, and Gibbs. It's like they're getting kicked in the nuts over and over and over again. This should have been Roshan's game. This should have been Roshan's game, and it wasn't because he couldn't get on the field. Regardless of the reason, I get it. He can't help himself if he can't pass the protocol. But good lord, man. 
You had two opportunities, and now you're punting your probably your third and fourth opportunity while Khalil Herbert's out because guess what? This guy looks like a magician. It looks like he invented running the football. Now he looks like a top 5-10 to 10 running back in the eyes of the Chicago Bears staff. They won. Their quarterback won. Their running back helped them win. They won this game, and now what? And now what? Now they think, let's not try and fix what, what isn't broken. This thing is actually functioning well. Let's run him out as a starter again. Welcome to the starting lineup, Deontay Foreman. Welcome to the bench, Roshan Johnson. Punted your opportunity. I mean, I'm just, I'm so frustrated by all, by all this, this, this garbage. Is this a good piece of news? Please, please be good. Lamar Jackson, two, 357 yards, three touchdowns. A fumble, adding nine carries for 36 yards and a touchdown. What a day. Four tutties for Lamar Jackson. If you own him, you, you couldn't bench him. We said this before the game. There was a lot of wind reporting. Um, we got to talk to our weatherman because the wind was not affecting Lamar Jackson scoring touchdowns. And our weatherman, our weatherman is the first day on the job. This is the first day we had three weathermen come in. It was the first day. Let's cut him some slack. But the weather was not a big concern here because Lamar Jackson absolutely destroyed in this game. I think what we need to remember is Lamar and the Ravens going forward when they're at home and there's any threat of, of environment situational obstacles. We need to realize that they're trained for this and Lamar will figure out a way. I, I, I'm not saying Lamar won't be up and down, but this was a phenomenal, phenomenal bounce back performance out of Lamar Jackson. And anybody that has him has to feel pretty good right now to see that. And this guy right here coming through, 4 of 6, 63 yards and two tutties. Andrews and Lamar, let's give them the, the flowers they deserve. You got to love it. You got to love it. It's fantastic when you see this kind of thing happen and bounce bouncing back on any level. You know, we want some of our players to bounce back. Um, that we've been touting all year long. We got to root for every player that bounces back because this is a family. This is a fantasy football family. And every single fantasy football player is in this family. Even Josh Jacobs. Okay. Josh Allen completed 27 of 45 attempts for 265, two touchdowns, and an interception. And so not not a not a horrible outing, but it's possible that Josh Allen could be bought a tiny bit lower walking into um you know, in, into uh, this coming, you know, final final weeks of the season. Th that's the news, ladies and gentlemen. It was brutal in so on some levels. It was fantastic on other levels. That's the nature of fantasy football, and we got to adjust and adapt, and we're going to do it right now. Melvin, with the first Super Chat of the evening, always gets a standing O. Mel Melvin, yeah. Melvin, appreciate you coming in strong with the fir first super. Smitty, I still win with Ridley playing bad anyway. Atta boy, Melvin, way to way to to, to do, do good work, bro. Elvis coming in strong with a five dollar crazy. Gibbs, JT, Rice, Henderson will pay off. Hall on a buy. HN on IR traded for Hertz and, and Hawkinson. Waiting for the playoffs. Um, I follow Smitty. Elvis to the moon. Elvis to the moon. There is an Elvis sighting in the chat. Elvis has been sighted. Daniel. Uh, five dollar holler. Another week goes by, and another week I lose because my bench has high scoring players. I play Ridley, Lockett, and Downs, and Foreman go the f off. That's tough, bro. I mean, look, you know, Lockett, Lockett, Downs, Foreman. Those were close calls. Lockett is always capable. A Lockett could have had a hundred yards and two touchdowns, and everybody would have said Lockett's a goat. Lockett's the goat ever. You know, it's it's volatile. It's week to week. That was a tough call. Foreman was hard to to bank on with the the Bears looking like you didn't know if they were going to be cheeks all game and, and be out of contention in the game and game script out. So you can't beat yourself up over this this Daniel, but you can you can adjust and adapt and you got good players that have good sell high value too if you need to. Um, who's going to blow up in the Miami Philly game? Hopefully everybody. I hope this is 45 to you know 97 in this this game i think tua has let's call it three touchdowns i think tyreek hill has at least 100 yards in a tutty i think waddle has 90 in a touch i think uh mostert has a touchdown and probably 100 total yards i think wilson has a, a nice little day i think hertz has at least 
two to three touchdowns, one on the ground, one in the through the air to Devontae Smith, maybe a third one to A.J. Brown. Goddard has 70 yards. Swift has 100 total yards. I'm, I'm just one. I know this is very optimistic, Oscar, of me, but we're going to go ahead and say everybody everybody plays ball today. Everybody it gets first place today. No second place trophies today. If you're not first, you're last, and everybody's first in today's uh in today's uh, tonight's game, uh, doing one versus one pick for, for Superflex drafts on Underdog. Appreciate you, Deckard, for dropping the super chat. This one here is from Russell. Russell with a five dollar hauler. Only Gibbs concern I have is that there is a narrative being painted that Goff took more hits without Monty blocking for him. Um, yeah, you could say that, but you could also say that this game got out of control very quickly. And there was a lot of trying to throw the football and holding on to the football longer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not to say that there isn't better blocking with Monty back there. But keep in mind, Monty will come back to block. Gibbs needs to be used like A-Chan is used. Mostert is not going away. A-Chan is a complement that actually plays better than Mostert because the complement is a better player in very good positioning to do big things, to be covered, uh, to be forgotten about, to be in the slot, to be roaming around the field. And so really, I don't mind if Monty returns to his role and we know he will. We just need Gibbs to continue to be used. And I don't know if we're going to see that. And Monty might get injured anyway because they've broken him twice already. They have no concern for Monty at all. And if they do, they'll dial him back and Gibbs will get more work. Unless they give it to Reynolds, which wouldn't shock me at all. It feels very much like Arthur Smith is controlling both of these teams. <laughs> to be honest with you, I could have played Wandell or Downs from waivers, made the wrong decision. Um, Downs, was, Downs was good. Downs was good. Downs is... You know, but keep in mind, Downs, you know, could could be hit and miss from week to week. But it, Downs has a special rapport with, with uh, Minshew. So I would bank on Downs going forward. With Minshew, you got to trust Downs going forward. The, the, the rapport is special. And I don't think that gets broken up. Ayuk at Minnesota, Mostert at Philly. We're going to go with probably Mostert. Ayuk is safe in PPR. Mostert's higher risk, higher reward. But I'm going to go with Mostert. Honestly, you got to start both of them. You should have not have left this up to to. You should have had both those guys in your your, your lineup. These are this is a big. These are going to be big games, big scoring games. Uh, what to do about St. Brown? Uh, what do you mean, rock out? What are we doing about about St. Brown's monster performance? Are are you down on him today? Where's my Where's my St. Brown graphic? Where's St. Brown when you need him? Where is he? I know he's in here somewhere. I buried him. With all this other news, all this other bad news. St. Brown, where are you? St. Brown, Rockout's talking some smack, I think, about you. 13 of 19 for 102. You had a good day. What do you mean, what do we do What do we do we about St. Brown? That, uh, Rockout, maybe you're not meaning it in a negative way, but good God, the, the guy's phenomenal. So I'm so... I'm so um, I'm so just riled up from today. Just the good and the bad. They, they, they hit me like a mixed bag of emotions. And I don't know how to control myself. Because at one, one, one breath, I'm, I'm excited. The other breath, I'm absolutely uh, just you know pissed off. You know Because I don't know. I, I don't know what you mean by that, Rockout. Rockout, uh, when we open the phone lines, Rockout, you can call in and, and we'll discuss. Uh, the, the refs had uh, a parlay on the Browns versus my Colts, says uh, Draven. Draven, appreciate you, $2 hauler. Picked up Henderson before the game before game time. He was better than Freeman. Uh, a little more for the Mallet Fund. Thank you. Appreciate you, Superfish. <laughs> buying, buying, uh, yeah, earmarking that. I'll earmark that $5 for the new um, gavel, I guess we call it. It's a Mallet gavel. Same thing, really, in my mind. Let's open the phone line. Unbelievable day. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. Phone line's brought to you by Call into the show. Wheel. Call, call into the show. Snipe. Selly. Highest super chat in a single live stream in the month of October. And probably we'll leave this up for, for November since we're so close to the end of October. And he was such a monster dropping additional gifted memberships last night. We're going to make sure Selly stays on there all November. Unless somebody knocks him off. If somebody drops a $320 hauler, they knock Selly right off. They knock him right off. Uh, Rockout, 
Rock out, you got uh, 30 seconds, pal. Hit me with your question. And what do you, hold on. Let, let's go back real quickly before we before we uh, give you your 30 seconds. I, I want to first ask you, what do you mean about this St. Brown comment? Are, are we selling high on him? Oh, you're just wanting to know. Like, but why do you say that though? You you definitely had a tone to it. Like you're worried about him. Like, are we gonna sell high? Like, why are we selling high and not trusting him? I'm just trying to figure it out. You can be honest if you're if you're having a concern. I just want to know what the concern is. I'll have a, I'll have a concern. I just wrote it wrong. Okay. So um, and it's okay if you did. I just wanted to know. Like, maybe I'm not looking at it from a certain angle. It wasn't it wasn't a bad thing. I I think that. Um, it depends, Rock Out. I would sell anybody high. I would also hold on to anybody popping off. I'd also buy anybody low if I like the player to bounce back. So everything's just dependent on situation. And you got to ask yourself, okay, what's my team look like? Can I win with St. Brown? Can I win with freaking Kelsey? Because there are teams that have Travis Kelsey that can't win. If you lose this week and you had Kelsey or you lose this week and you had... Mahomes, you have big problems and you cannot keep these players because you clearly cannot win with, with them. You must do your best to trade them and divide and conquer so you can figure out how to win games. If you did not win with Kelsey or Mahomes, especially if you have both, you've got huge problems. Um, hey, Smitty, asking for a buddy, Barkley, Christian Watson, and Tyler Boyd for Chase and Devontae Smith. You take Chase and Devontae Smith, and you run, bro. And Steve, stop acting like this is for a buddy. This is for you. And I'm telling you right now, you take that Chase side, and you run. You got moments before kickoff here. I don't know. Well, you, you could accept it. It goes through next week anyway, but... Bro, you got to do this trade. Don't let him watch Devontae Smith score a touchdown. Watson's injured. Who knows how bad he is. Barkley was almost out for the year during the middle of the game. Came back and played well. But good God, man. You got to take that trade. All right. Uh, rock out. Your 30 seconds begins now. And I appreciate you clarifying that for me. Hold St. Brown, but I would sell him if your team can't win. Sure. You got 30. Yeah, the only, it's, only issue I had this week as far as winning was Bijan. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, beat. but um, can I give you my my team. Uh, yeah. One sec, hold on. All right, I got I got Love, Burrow, and uh, Purdy at quarterback. Then at running back, I got Bijan, Kenneth Walker, uh, Javante, and Roshan. And then Charbonnet, and then wide receiver St. Brown, Alave, Ayuk, uh, McCorn, and uh, JSN. Okay. I mean, there's not much you can do with Bijan right now. Um, Walker is a player I consider selling high. I consider selling high. If you can get the right package for him. He did have another hundred yard game. He didn't score, but you have you have to you have to really be concerned about making sure you get the right deal because this is not somebody I sell for for just anybody. I love Kenneth Walker. He looks phenomenal, but his his schedule is really brutal, and you just got to entertain that. Bijan, you can't sell Bijan. No one's going to buy Bijan. You have to hold him. Yeah. You've got two good quarterbacks. Yeah. No one's buying high on those guys. St. Brown, I just think you hold this team. This team's very good. You need Bijan to bounce back. You probably won't win the league if Bijan doesn't bounce back, but you have no other choice because what is he going to get you? Are you going to trade him for A-Chan and something? Yeah. If you do that, I like it. You get A-Chan and, a, and, a, and another RB to fill in, I like that, but I don't think you're going to get that at this moment in time. I honestly don't. Yeah, probably not. All right, so stand down on this team, Rock Out. Um, Alert. All right, later, pal. Order in effect. All right, uh, 30 seconds, Theo. Uh, so, Smitty, um, I know everyone said to buy low on Aaron Jones and that he was on a snap count. Um, do you think he'll still be a good RB2 or flex option? Uh, <sighs> I don't know, bro. Forward? I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. I feel way more confident in Eckler bouncing back and being remaining a good buy low than I do Aaron Jones. But Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones is like that risky play you need to go after if you're not winning.
Devontae Smith's catch. Yeah. You like you know what I mean? Like you if you can't win anyway, this is a good stab in the dark. Yeah, he's he doesn't even make my lineup when I don't have buys. Mm-hmm. And I'm in a twelve team, so Yeah. I was just wondering if I should keep him or uh, I mean, d- you can't really get anything for him right now, bro. So you kind of wait. Go, go try for a chan. Go try for uh, struggling players. Like, let's say, you know, some people doubt Olave right now. Devontae yeah. Smith was perfect, like but this game just kicked off. Uh, trade him for Devontae Smith right now. Like, get the guy to accept I, the trade. Okay, then then you're gonna have to just look at wide receivers. Look across position. Um, I quarter- got Monra and Jamar Chase, so I think yeah. I'm straight there. All right. All right, call, call uh, back. Right, we'll we'll, we'll call back day. when you got something else cooked up. All right, later. Um, Swift doing good things on the ground there. Uh, Hank from Illinois, you got thirty. What's your um, thoughts on JSN today? I love him, bro. <laughs> we were waiting on JSN all year, and I know a lot of people had to get rid of him for injuries and buys, and it was a last resort. Like I would, when everybody, somebody would say, "Do I cut JSN?" It's like, oh, I don't want you to, but like. Your bench size might make it to where you you can't field the starting lineup. You got to watch them. You got to monitor them. But the thing about this week was we we smelled it. It was close, bro. We knew that that DK might not play or Lockett might not play or they would both play injured or one of them could get hurt during the middle of the game. Uh, Devontae Smith pulled in a pass but then fumbled it out of bounds or it was incomplete. Looks like it was incomplete. Um, they're going to Devontae Smith a lot, though. That's good. JSN just needed an opportunity. Keep in mind, this Eagles team plays at two wide receiver sets a lot. And so he's the third wide receiver. So it was never like, okay, he's going to explode in week one. But is is does 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 uh, um, Pete Carroll have like a, a card up his sleeve like he's going with a lot more three wide receiver sets? Because why would he draft him? But apparently he drafted him because he knows that Lockett's older. He knows DK's aggressive with his body. And they're both injured right now. They're both injury prone. So we knew that there was an opportunity eventually. JSN had, as I said, all off all season long from weeks one until now, he has league winning potential. He does. He has league winning potential. He just, it, it, he might not ever show it. Like there's, there some players, like A-Chan was this player. A-Chan, I said week one, week two, week three. He had league winning potential. He was a healthy scratch in week one. Smitty, he was a scratch. He's not going to do anything. He has league winning potential. I can't control when he gets into the lineup. You know, I try to. I try to predict it, but I can't control it. I can't control when JSN gets an opportunity. He is so talented if he gets the opportunity. He's dominated every wide receiver room he's been in when he's gotten the, the reps. And he got the reps in this game and he played well. So... Love him going forward, bro. Uh, appreciate the the question, Hank. Uh, lateral Nicholas, you got thirty seconds. Hey, Smitty, I'm uh, six and zero. I'm about to be seven and zero. I have um, Tyron, A Chain, AR, um, Devonta Smith, Amon Ra. I was just wondering if I should make moves or just hold off since I'm, I have such a good record. I mean, you're obviously doing good things. Um, Kyron's tempting to trade because. Yeah, you know, I have no RB2. I have Swift, and I have no RB2 now with A-Chain and, and Kyron out. Yeah, I mean, maybe you trade Kyron for, maybe you take a gamble on a B, like, take a gamble on a Bijan, bro. Like, try and give up another player to get Bijan, and you be the guy that watches him flourish on your roster, and you just smile and laugh. There's a chance he doesn't do it. I talked about that already. I, I can't predict what Arthur Smith's going to do. I honestly feel this is the most defeated I feel about predicting when i do believe he is the first or second best pure running back in the national football league already and i don't care what anybody says i don't care i don't care what the stat says the stats say i don't care what the game log says i don't care what any other analyst says i don't care what my mom says i don't care what anybody says he is either the first or the second best if you want to put mccaff i say that because i want to put mccaffrey and give mccaffrey his respect Pure running back in the National Football League, but it doesn't matter right now because a he's he's got a little cough, little 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 sneezy poo, and, and second mm-hmm. Arthur Smith doesn't know how to use him or deploy him, and I don't I don't know if that's going to change, but I would certainly take the gamble, go get him using Kyron. If you can't get him, the, the Bijan guy's like two and four, so I don't think he's trading. Sure. 
retiring. Yeah. Um, what about Aaron Jones? Like you could take a, a gamble there. I yeah, mean, I was, the, talking to, I was talking to the guy today. Eckler. Um, Eckler. About trading Aaron Jones. Eckler. What's the Eckler guy? Guy. Uh, what's his record? Um. He is, he's four and two. He might take it. Um, for anybody wondering why they're a member, a green, green name member. Um, look, th this, this guy, Sully came in last night and gifted like 200 or something memberships. And so we had, he gifted more memberships than there were people in the live stream that, that didn't have them. And he kept, it was maybe like 300 gifted memberships. So YouTube will randomly give them out to other random uh, subscribers that are not, not even watching. So any of you have those right now, it's because Selly gave you one. Uh, what'd you say, bro? What was, what would you just say? Yeah. The Eckler guy is four and two. I, I would look at, I would look into Eckler. I would look, depending on how Swift does, you may, you might not be able to get him. I would look into Aaron Jones. I have I, Swift. I have, okay. I have Swift. All right, bro. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Um, let's go to, um, Blake from Jersey. You got 30. Blake, you got 30. I think you meant Missouri. Oh, I thought you said Jersey. Wrong, Blake. All right, hey, listen, I already called in and asked about this. What's your second opinion now? All right, so I still want to get Bijan and Adams, and I was the guy who had Hall, Pickens, and Cooper. Would you still make that trade, or would you try to move different pieces around, just knowing what happened this weekend? Uh, you would get uh... – you would be giving up Hall, Hall, Pickens, and Cooper for Bijan and what? Yeah. Uh, Adams. Who Adams. both didn't do well. And so this is like one of those cases of sell high, buy low. Um, chat, what do you think on this? I, I still feel like... <laughs> good God, man. I, I love Brees Hall. And he's right now he's the, the best player in the deal, yeah, potentially. Well, but yeah, but the... The problem. So you always recommend go ahead and sell while he's at the top of his game to try and buy other players who are going to be at the top yeah, of their game. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what I'm saying. Um, yep. I, I think Bijan and Adams have the potential, both of them, to be to be to be top five at their position. You know, the remaining part of the season, but it's still hard to like say. We know when that's going to happen, or if it's going to happen for for Bijan, and Adams yeah, is living in volatility, and yeah. it's it's so hard to. I don't know. I I think at this point you got to take something away from this trade, like it, it, like let me re ask the chat. If you took let's say Cooper out of this trade, would would the chat still rather have Hall? Because the chat rather have the Hall side than the Pickens side. Would the chat rather have the Hall side if we took Pick or Cooper entirely out of this trade? I think you need to go back to the table and say to yourself, like this, the things have changed for this guy. You can't sit there and go buy Bijan at the same price. You got to go to him and say, I don't know that Bijan's coming back or doing anything, bro. And he could go, Oh, he'll be fine. You go, Bro, stop, stop playing with me. You wouldn't trade him if you didn't think the same damn thing. So guess what? I'll give you Cooper and Pickens for just Bijan. <laughs> but like, would anybody take would anybody take this right here? Bijan and Devontae Adams for Hall and Pickens. I mean, I I feel like that I feel like that is I feel like that's 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 a good gamble if you can't win. But if you're winning, why do anything? What's your record? Uh uh four and two. Is that how many games? Four uh, four and three, sorry. I'm gonna be four and three. Four and three. Um, I like both of those players, right? I'm willing to take the risk. Hey, and something else you need to keep in mind is my guys have all gone through the buys, and I don't think his have. So I'd have to, I'd have to take that in the future weeks, right? Both mm -hmm. of them not being playable, yeah, uh, one week at a time. I mean, it's, a, it's a big factor. Yeah, so that's what's been holding me back. Now I'm thinking about this. I love both of his players. But, you know, you were complaining about Bijan, and, and I agree wholeheartedly, but I would still love to go and take that risk at the same time. Well, it, it, it sounds like you really want to take the risk on it. So, like, don't worry about what anybody else thinks. I wanted to get the chat's Huge vote. I but it. I think the chat and I agree that if you're going to go down this road, you need to take Cooper out or Pickens, either one. Okay. 
and say, bro, yeah. I don't care what we had. Yesterday's price isn't today's. And and if he wants to try and play hardball, you can tell him good luck with Arthur Smith because it's not about Bijan. It's about Arthur. And you could tell him it doesn't matter how good Bijan is. It means zero. So, do you, do you think there was some sketchy stuff being like maybe held from the public? Maybe Bijan wasn't necessarily sick because he was out there. If he's sick, why is he? No, I, I think it's. I think it's that. I think it's that stupid. I think it's that dumb. It's he had a little stomach ache or whatever the hell it was. No, look, look, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan played with the flu. Your boy Smitty's sick right now. My throat is burning and I've been screaming and yelling. But I showed up and I'm going to show up tonight. It, it just drives me nuts. All right, hey, gotta go, Blake. Appreciate you. Um, uh, Cap from Florida, our weatherman. Cap, what do you got for us? What's the weather looking like? All right, bro. Look, it's looking beautiful. Look, I, I have something going on here that I think I should do quick before that. They, they, okay, look, the fourth place guy, it's a 14 team league. The fourth place guy lost four in a row. Do I offer JSN and Henderson for Nico Collins and stack them up with CJ Stroud? Um, first of all, the stack doesn't get you any more points, it's just fun. Uh, I don't know, bro. I'd rather probably, I mean, I like Nico, but man, what do you guys think on this? Nico, are we banking on Nico coming off the bye week being bye week free for the rest of the year? Um, so is JSN though. Do we like JSN holding his own for a while or does DK and Lockett return to return this JSN situation into a cloudy one? Will Hendy even remain the guy and, and, and Kyron's coming back. So, is there a potential that JSN and Hendy, like turtles, go back into their shell at some point down the road? And do we just roll with Nico? Um, I'd love to get a chat vote on this one. Uh, we got a Nico vote. We got a JSN is booming, says Will. Um, uh, let's see here. Just like the Lions, these coaches don't give a bleep about fantasy. It's not even about fantasy. They're not even like thinking about fantasy or trying to burn fantasy. They're just like, I like to rotate my backs. And I like to take out Bijan at the goal line. I don't care for JSN till next season, honestly, says Brandon. Nico for sure. Uh, Nico. Um, get Nico passing yeah, I there. Kinda, JSN. I was kind of hesitant when you said about Barkley getting injured, but I, I'm thinking the same thing. We might as well do it now before freaking uh, Williams comes back and, and with the Rams, you know? Uh, what do you mean? What's Barkley have to do with this? No, you said something earlier about Barkley getting banged up, and that's what's kind of worrying me moving forward about him getting banged up. I'm but what, just so high. But what's Barkley have to do with this trade? No, I'm just – because I have Barkley and I have ETM, but if Barkley gets banged up in the next couple of weeks, it's good to have a backup plan in Henderson. That's what I'm Oh, okay, okay. I, that's what I was saying. What was – okay, so you're just looking for an extra running back. So you yeah, be yeah, trade – you be trade – so, It's kind of rough, man. So you be trading Nico. I thought you were saying the other way. No, no, no. I want Nico. I, since I picked up Henderson and, and, J, and JSN okay. off the waiver, I'm figuring okay. I'm so you're, guys off the waiver. Okay, so you're hesitating because you're afraid you won't have a backup. Okay, I got you. You're confusing me there. Um, that was a, uh, that but felt I like Nico too, bro. Yeah, I, look, I, I guess you know everyone's kind of saying Nico. There are a few Hender, Henderson people. There are back-to-back Hendersons taking over. Henderson, you know, to the moon. Nico. Uh, Kyron isn't back for weeks, says Travis. Uh, gonna be a rotation. Schefter said uh, Kyron ain't getting that much usage when he comes back. Who said that, Hammer? <laughs> you, think, you think you think Schefter's got a, a blueprint of what the workload divide's gonna be when Kyron comes back? No, he doesn't have. No one knows that information yet. Uh, Hammer throwing out fake news. Hey, I appreciate you, man. All right, I'm hey, not watching this game. All man. right, l- later, weatherman. That's our Cap, our in-house weatherman. Thank you, Cap. Appreciate you. All right, guys. I'm out of here. I'll be back at the end of the game to recap everything. Thanks for watching. I'm live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, live whenever news breaks. Live whenever news breaks, live to recap games. Appreciate every single one of you. Thank you to my super chatters.
but the continuum of the gigawatt component structure of Jameer Gibbs's workload divide has a megawatt offload that if you compartmentalize the component conjunction timekeeper and you flux capacitor out the continuum component megabolt, things just end up happening. And that's why Jameer Gibbs is a top five to 10 running back instead of top six to 10. Yeah.